Hello financial fans, welcome back to another stock analysis. Today we'll be covering Merck Co stock ticker MRK. Merck Co is a multinational pharmaceutical company that specializes in researching, developing and manufacturing a wide range of innovative prescription drugs, vaccines, biologic therapies and animal health products. The company's main focus is on developing medicines and vaccines to address unmet medical needs for various therapeutic areas including cancer, infectious diseases, diabetes, cardiovascular diseases and neurology. Merkin Co. is also involved in the research and development of no novel therapies for emerging diseases and conditions such as Ebola, HIV and COVID-19. Merkin Co. operates in over 140 countries and its products are sold in more than 190 countries. The company has a strong research and development pipeline and invests heavily in scientific innovation to address some of the most significant global health challenges. In addition, Merck Co. has commitment to sustainability and social responsibility, with in initiatives to reduce its environmental impact and increase access to healthcare in unserved uh, communities. They are currently sitting at a $246.3 billion market cap and in 2022 they generate a revenue of $58.5 billion and the dividend yield is currently sitting at 2.8% uh, rather. 46% of their revenue comes from the United States, 27% from EMEA which stands for Europe, Middle East and Africa, 9% from China, 6% from Japan, 5% from Asia Pacific, 4% from Latin America and the remaining 3% from other various regions. To determine the final valuation of the company, we'll be using a margin of safety. This margin of safety will be based on the financial ratios, the financial health and the growth of the company. And we'll be using a standard margin of safety of 25% that can never go below 0%. The margin of safety can either increase or decrease by the ratios that we're going to look at in just a moment. And the severity that the margin of safety will increase or decrease by will be determined by using a scale. When we're using four colors in our scale, bright red will mean a 5% increase, orange will mean no change, light green will mean a 5% deduction, and bright green will mean a 10% deduction. When we're using three colors, bright red will mean a 5% increase, orange will mean no change, and bright green will mean a 5% deduction from a margin of safety. First two metrics that we'll be looking at are the EBIT growth and margin growth. The EBIT has gone up over the years, going from $9.2 billion in 2013 to over $20 billion in 2022. The average EBIT growth during the years was 13.5%, meaning a 5% deduction in the margin of safety. The margin has also increased, going from 21% in 2013 to almost 35% in 2022. The average margin increase was 8.4%, uh, 8 meaning another 5% deduction from margin of safety. Next to ratios are the dividend growth and payout ratio. The dividends have also gone up over the years, going from $1.67 a share in 2013 to $2.92 a share in 2022. The average dividend growth was 5.9%, meaning no change in the margin of safety. This with a payout ratio that's currently sitting at 49%, which also is no change in the margin of safety on this metric. The final two ratios that we'll be looking at are debt to EBITDA and return on invested capital. To get a debt to EBITDA ratio, we have to take the debt of the company, subtract the cash from it and divide it by the EBITDA. Out of this, we get the amount of years of EBITDA it takes for the company to pay off all of their debts. And for Merck Co., this is almost one year, in this case a 72% debt to EBITDA ratio, meaning a 5% deduction from a margin of safety. The return on invested capital for Merck Co. is sitting at 15.9%, indicating that the management is very effective at allocating capital. This awards them with another 5% deduction and a margin of safety. Looking very good so far for Merck Co. Let's go look at the valuation models next to determine the intrinsic value of the company. The first valuation model that we'll be using is the discounted cash flow model. I've imported the free cash flow of Merck Co. going from 2014 to 2022. The average growth and free cash flow during this period was 30.81% annually and I'm projecting an expected growth rate of 6% in their annual free cash flow for the next 10 years. With this percentage we can determine the future free cash flow from Merck Co. and determine a terminal year of valuation using a perpetual growth rate of 3% and a discount rate of 8.5%. This gives us a sum of free cash flow of $323.8 billion. And to get our equity value, we have to add the cash in equivalents and subtract the debt, giving us an equity value of $306.3 billion. And to get our intrinsic value out of this model, we then have to uh, divide it by the amount of shares outstanding, giving us a discounted cash flow price per share of $120.60, which is a 15.85% upside of this model. The second model that we'll be using is the dividend discount model. 
have imported dividend payouts of Merkingo come from four years ago to the current year. The average growth rate in their dividends during this period was 7.35% annually, and I'm projecting an expected growth rate of their future dividends of 6%, and we'll be using a 8.5% discount rate again in this valuation. In this model, we get a dividend discount model price per share of $123.81, which is a 18.93% upside out of this model. The third model that we use is Graham's advice valuation formula. In this model, we take a look at the earnings per share that Merkin Co. is generating, the growth rate estimate projected by Wall Street, and the current yield of AAA corporate bonds in relation to the average yield of AAA corporate bonds, always sitting at 4.4. And we go by the theory that a company with no growth always is sitting at a PE of 7. Taking a look at all of these metrics, we get a fair value of this model of $89.92, which is a 13.62% downside from the current price. The fourth model that we use is the multiple valuation. In this model, we look at similar companies to Merck Co. Look at their stock price and earnings per share. This way, we can determine the average PE multiple in the industry, which in this case is sitting at 19.11. All to do to get our fair value is to multiply by the earnings per share, which is sitting at $5.53 a share. And this gives us a fair value of $105.66, which is a 1.50% upside of this model. And the last model that we use is the mean reversion theory. In this model we go by the theory that the company will always trade above or below its mean. And the metrics that we use to determine these are the dividend yield and the PE ratio. On average of the past 5 years the dividend yield has been sitting at 3.13% while the current yield is sitting at 2.71%. Meaning that it is currently overvalued on this metric. Doing the same with the PE ratio we get an average PE ratio of 20.29. And on this metric it's currently a little bit more cheap than on average. We get a fair value then out of this model of $101.18, which is a 2.8% downside of this model. If you want access to all of the models that I use in my videos and more, you can check in the description for my Patreon link. Anyways, getting that self-promotion out of the way, let's go look at the final overview of evaluation next. Looking at our final overview, we've imported the discounted cash flow, discounted dividend, grains valuation, the multiple valuation, and the mean reversion theory price per share, giving us an average of $108.23. On margin of safety, we've determined earlier, using a standard margin of safety of 25%, deducting it by 5% for the debt to EBITDA, 5% for the EBITDA growth, 5% for the margin growth, 5% for return on invested capital, leaving us with a margin of safety of 5%. Applying this margin of safety, we get a fair value of $102.82, and with the current price of $104.10, we get a small downside of 1.23%, indicating that it's currently very close to fair value out of our valuation. If there's any other companies that you would like to see me cover on this channel, please let me know in the comments. And thanks for watching.